You know, when you know something is going to respond or react in a certain way in advance, that gives you a big advantage in life in achieving the things that you want to achieve. Would you like to be able to expand that skill for yourself? Well, stay tuned. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And you know, the more phenomenons of human nature and human and universal law that you understand and use, the more chances you have to be successful. Let me give you some examples. First, let's kind of define the difference between laws of human nature and universal law. Let's start with universal law. You know, I'm sure we've all, at one time in our life, had burger and fries and wanted to put some ketchup on there. Okay, and what do we do? You pound the ketchup, get the, get the ketchup to go from the, the top to the bottom, and then you're able to, it, it comes out because gravity forces it to come out. All right, that's one example. Or if you're pouring yourself a glass of juice or a glass of milk, you take the cart and you pour it, and gravity forces it to go from the cart and into the glass. All right, so that's the universal law. Let's talk a little bit about laws of nature. Now, I'll give you one example. Okay, did you ever go someplace and just, somebody's looking up? What do you do when somebody looks up? You tend to look up too. What are they looking at? Okay, it's a law of nature. You see somebody do something like that, you look up. Or I'll give you a different example. You know, uh, when, when you see there's like an accident on the highway, it's human nature to stop and just, you, you got to slow down and you just got to take a look and see what happens. You know, when I lived in Massachusetts, they used to call those people that, that would turn and look, they call them rubberneckers. Okay, rubberneckers. All right, and then when I moved to California, the, the traffic reporters would say looky-loos. And I had no idea what a looky-loo was, and then I found out it was the same as a rubbernecker. All right, it's human, it's human nature. Or if, let's say you're a leader, and you're giving direction to the people that are, you know, that you're direct, you know, that are under you. You say, I need you to do this, and you roll up your sleeves yourself, and you get to work. And if you do it with them, they tend to be more intense in their activity than if you just gave them direction and you walked away. Once again, it's human nature. Now, the converse of that is also true. Now, let, let's say as an example that you're getting into an argument with somebody, heaven forbid, you know, and it, it's starting to get, maybe it's going to get physical, and then you go up and you have, you know, your fist clenched and, you, and you're assuming that posture. What is the other person going to do? Well, they're going to do one of two things. What first thing they may do is they're going to assume a posture, assume a defensive mode as well. Or if they're like me, they're a chicken, they're going to pick up and they're going to run away. All right. But this and these are laws of human nature. So the words respond and react are kind of two sides of the same coin. Now, while universal laws and laws of human nature are not exactly the same, they can both be used to predict certain activity. A universal law like gravity always responds the same way. It's consistent and it acts without any prejudice. Now the law of human nature isn't quite as reliable because of the variable known as human circumstances, but if all things are equal, you can usually anticipate what the end result will be. Like the traffic reporter that sees the accident from the helicopter. The accident may be minor, it may be pushed off to the side, but he knows it's going to be a slowdown because of human nature. The looky-loos and the rubberneckers are going to slow down traffic. The reporter can take that to the bank that people are going to slow down to look and see what happened. Now, when, when you stop and think about that, isn't that really the sum and substance that one seeks when you're following a mentor? The mentor has been there and done that. So he or she knows what results are going to occur when certain actions are taken in, in specific circumstances. They can predict how people will respond to an individual catalyst. Some businesses like to send out sort of like flyers in the mail, you know, they'll, they'll put it in with, we used to do with a thing called Valpac, and we send it out to a complete zip code. And we knew in advance that we were going to get somewhere of a 1% to 3% response. So you're spending a lot of money, but in that one, if you say to yourself, if I can make sales from that 1% to 3% that respond, 
then I'm going to make some hay. Let me give you a different example, Eli. When you first started playing basketball, you were very anxious for me to come to the playground with you so you could play me one-on-one -on -one and kick my butt. Now, you had some success playing against your peers, and you were anxious to show off your skills to me. But I knew something that you didn't know. When you played against your classmates, they would defend you straight up. When they did that, you were able to drive past them using your right hand, your strong hand, and then beat them to the basket. Now I, on the other hand, no pun intended, did not play you straight up. Why? Because I knew that your right hand was strong and that your left hand was weak. So I would position myself to deny you going to your right and force you to go to your left where you didn't want to go. Your left hand was weak, it was slow, it was uncoordinated, and unfortunately for you at that time, our fi the final score of our games indicated that. I wasn't denying you to go to the right to be mean. I did it to show you that there was much more work to be done in your game, that you needed to develop a left hand. I also showed you that so you'd be able to defend your opponents more effectively by employing the same defensive strategy that I used on you. I was your coach. I was your mentor. Now, human nature told me that you'd be using your right hand because that's your strong hand. It wasn't a universal law, but it was a law of nature. And all things being equal, I knew that you'd want to go right and not go left. So what is all this preamble leading up to? Well, I've been reading a book called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, which I strongly recommend. And the question that the author is answering in his book is what are the factors that cause a product or service that was previously unknown or unpopular to become a fashionable epidemic? Is there a set of rules that causes an epidemic to occur? In other words, how can the unwritten laws of human nature be harnessed to make this phenomenon work for you? What makes something popular to the masses of people? So now that you understand about universal law, a law like gravity that works consistently and without prejudice, and the laws of human nature that work fairly consistently and sometimes with prejudice, I want to share with you some more laws of nature so that you can add them to your repertoire and achieve more consistent results with your endeavors. That is what we're going to talk about the next time we adjourn. I needed to lay that foundation for you. And until that time, always remember, don't ration the passion, fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.